does plugging in your headphones and listening to music while you're working out actually allow you to get a better workout? Like physiologically, does it make you burn more fat? Does it get your heart rate up? Does it make you work harder? Does it make you lift heavier? Does it make you run faster, stronger? Well, let's look at true physiology here. Because honestly, we all know that there's an increased perceived exertion, right? By listening to music, you're gonna have an increase in how the workout feels, which is definitely nothing to sneeze at. It's good for something. But what about the actual physiological effect? Well, let's dive into it. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and a bunch of other ones in between. Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that funky looking bell icon to turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a new video. Now, for those of you that are trying to get the most out of your body and your mind, I encourage you to check out Four Sigmatic down in the description below. You've probably heard me talk about them before, you've probably seen them in Whole Foods. The cool thing with Four Sigmatic is they've been able to take good quality coffee and combine it with adaptogenic mushrooms to give you the most powerful effect on your brain. So we're talking things like lion's mane, we're talking things like cordyceps that have proven scientific evidence behind them to actually increase ATP production. It's gonna give you more energy in your brain. So anyway, if you just want that extra mental boost before or after a workout, you're gonna to wanna to check them out because they don't break a fast either. Now, let's get into the fun stuff. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to look at one interesting study. This study generalized things, but I think it's a great one to open with because it makes some sense of just the entirety of plugging in headphones whenever you're gonna work out. This study was published in the International Review of Sports and Exercise Psychology. So it found, in general, through looking at a lot of different studies, that low to moderate intensity exercise would see an improvement when listening to music. However, high intensity exercise would not see much of an improvement simply because of attention processes. Now what that means is that when you're working at a maximal effort, you aren't in a position to absorb additional stuff, additional stimuli coming in from the ears. Like you're just not gonna do it. Basically you're so focused, for example, lifting a heavy weight that the music is going to be such a small portion of what your mind is focusing on that it's not going to elicit a powerful response. However, if it's a low to moderate activity, the music can help you out. Going for a run, just going through a general kind of lower intensity type hit workout, it's gonna make a big difference. But then when we start looking at some more practical stuff, there was a study that was published in the International Journal of Physiology took a look at 25 subjects, and this was a pretty interesting thing. What they did is they measured how long they would work out if they had music plugged in. So, pretty interesting. What they found is that those that ended up plugging in music ended up working out for 37 minutes, whereas those that didn't have music ended up only working out for 22 minutes. There was a mild increase in heart rate in those that listen to music, but nothing crazy extreme. So what this kind of shows is that maybe it was just a boredom thing. Maybe by having some music, the mind was occupied, so they wanted to go for a little bit longer of a ride or a little bit longer of a workout. So that's good in itself. So I mean, when we look at different cues, we can see, okay, sure, it can affect the body, but a lot of this is starting to lead us to believe that it's just affecting the mind. If we can improve the mental state during a workout, then we can get by with a longer workout, and it's sort of a crutch. But do we start getting addicted to that crutch? Do we really want that all the time? Well, that kind of leads me into the next piece, which is the serotonin and dopamine piece. So serotonin is the feel-good neurotransmitter. There are a lot of studies that show that music improves serotonin levels. It helps you feel good. But the Journal in Neuroscience Letters published a study that found that listening to music actually increased dopamine levels. See, dopamine is our reward system. Dopamine is something we usually only activate when we like consume some caffeine or potentially a recreational drug or anything like that that's actually getting us a response. But music is actually triggering that reward system. And where we get really interesting results is when we start looking at the effect of dopamine, D2 and D3 dopaminergenic receptors, and how that affects our overall performance and pain tolerance. You see, when we have an increased binding of D2 and D3 receptors, and that binding occurs in the brain, we have an inverse correlation with response criterion. So what that basically means is that when our dopamine receptors are being bound, we have less sensitivity to pain. 
literally can dull pain. So we have sort of a different mechanism in which this is improving our workouts. We have the mental side of things, the emotional side of things, but we literally have a neurotransmitter effect that could be dulling pain. So then we look back at that first study that I talked about that said that you don't see an increase in high intensity training. Well, maybe you don't when you're measuring that specifically, but what if the high intensity activity that you're performing isn't perceived as high intensity? simply because the music is making it not seem as intense because you're nullifying some of that pain. How about them apples? That's a twisted way of looking at it, right? So if a really hard workout doesn't feel like as hard of a workout, but metabolically it's still a hard workout, you're just not feeling the pain as much, does it classify as a moderate workout or a high intensity workout? The world may never know, but the fact is dopamine plays a big role on our pain sense. So the fact is if we have more dopamine and we have less sensitivity to pain, then it just means that we might be able to get a little bit more out of our workout. But now let's take a look at how this applies to a literal physiological correlation. And what I mean by that is like, does the beats per minute or the tempo of the music or the type of music actually literally affect our heart rate? Does, does it actually change our body? Well, studies have shown that the heart tends to try to get in line with music that we're listening to. So if we're listening to higher, faster paced music, then we're going to get a little bit more of an elevated heart rate and vice versa. Lower intensity music is going to probably slow down our heart rate a little bit. But there was a study that was published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports that did a pretty deep dive on this. So this study took a look at 12 subjects. Okay, so they had a self-chosen workload, meaning they could work as intensely or not intensely as they wanted to for a total of 25 minutes. Now, what they did is they put headphones on these people, and unbeknownst to these test subjects, they would increase or decrease the tempo of the music by 10% as far as beats per minute go every so often. So they would never know. It's so incremental that they wouldn't tell if the beats were increasing or the beats were decreasing. Well, the results were really, really wild. So what they found is that when you sped up music, the distance traveled, the unit time, and the pedal power changed just a little bit. So by increasing the tempo, they would change the unit covered by 2.1%, they changed the overall unit by 0.7, and the pedal power by 5.9. Okay, but then when you actually look at decreasing the tempo of the music, there was significantly larger results. Meaning, when you decreased the tempo, the result was a lot more astronomical than increasing the tempo. So in other words, what that means is, cranking up music that's a faster tempo is going to help a little but putting on music that has a slower tempo is going to hurt a lot. So it's like the negative effect is significantly more powerful than the positive effect. So if you're gonna listen to music, listen at a faster tempo. And then they actually plugged it in with heart rate, which is pretty interesting. They found that faster paced music increased the heart rate by 0.1%, whereas slower music decreased the heart rate by 2.2%. Again, more of a result with lower heart rate. Now, it all depends on what you're doing. Do you wanna reduce your heart rate? or do you want to increase it? Sometimes you want to reduce it so you can perform better and lift better. So listening to slower classical music might actually have a role. But the interesting thing is when you looked at perceived exertion, that's where the astronomical effects were. Over 35% increase in perceived intensity by listening to faster music, simply because you felt like you were working out harder. Again, that counts for something because you get all those different responses, the dopamine, the serotonin, the endorphins, all that counts for something. So the fact of the matter is you want to keep it balanced. What I do is I only listen to music when I am actually lifting. When I stop lifting at the gym, I turn off the music. I turn it on during my workout. I turn it off in my rest periods. Simply put, the contrast is a lot more powerful that way. I'm not developing sort of a status quo mentality throughout my workout. It's always going to be a contrast that gets me amped up. So I recommend that you try that, but mess around with the different tempos. All in all, the science is pretty inconclusive because it tells us different things, but the heart does want to follow the beat. So if you want to get that heart rate up, get the beat up. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, you know where to put them. I'll see you in the next one.